All right, time to get busy. Let's go ahead and start assembling this thing and see how far I can get. All right, this is the clutch side. Uh, I've got the input shaft kind of stuck in there. Probably got to take that out, yeah. I guess the first thing to go in is probably the differential. One Pelican differential. <clears throat> go ahead and oil it. Get my handy dandy finger oiler. Input shaft has to go in, and then we kind of wiggle the other the input shaft in. And go ahead and clean this off just a little bit. Got some dust from settling overnight. I'm going to probably go 500 miles on the fluid and then change it. And I'm going to stick to a regimen where I change my gear oil every so often probably every other oil change because I kind of want this transmission to last a long time as I explained when I was doing the clearancing. Cool. One thing I didn't put on yet because I didn't want to destroy or damage them are the, uh, the sealing o-rings that go on the studs. So I'll oil those up. Roll them on. just thought of is when I was clearancing the input shaft bearings, uh, the Bentley manual said to rotate the shaft to settle the bearings, and I didn't really take that to heart. That's why it took me so long to get it get it right. But uh, what I ended up doing was, uh, you can watch your dial indicator as you turn it, it'll like you just it'll work it down and it'll it'll move the dial indicator. It'll keep going down, 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 down until it bottoms. When it bottoms, then you can do your play adjustment. Uh, that's how I found out I was off. So, ended up using a, a custom shim that I, I ground down, which I explained earlier. And man, it, it just it came out just perfect. So I'm totally happy about it. Throw some oil on this guy. Got my O-rings on. on the input shaft, they're not common bearings, they're kind of hard to find, but you can buy them in a kit form from ECS, or if you're really lucky, the dealer will have them. Good and oiled up. And then, yeah, this is why I left it loose, because I think I had to kind of finagle it in there. Yeah. Oh yeah, 
I just pick up on the output shaft just a tiny little bit, and then the whole thing meshes in there real nice. Checking out what gear is what. Here you can check it for operation again if you want. Right now we're in neutral. Yep. Neutral means the input shaft it can freely spin around without the output shaft moving. So I'm, I'm pretty happy that works. Neat. Alright. And I did not clean the reverse assembly or the linkage or any of that stuff. So I'm gonna cut camera and go clean all that shit. All right, I got everything cleaned up for the reverse and let's go ahead and install it. Not much of a trick to this. It's pretty much exactly reverse of taking it apart. Throw some oil on it. I didn't change the needle bearings, even though the Bentley said to do it. I said, oh, you must do this. I really don't know why. They look fantastic, and they don't have much of a load on them. I mean, it's reverse gear, right? Going to eat my words, maybe, but I don't really care. Anyway, so if you have this taken apart and you don't know how it goes back together, the Bentley doesn't tell you that the uh, reverse gear itself... Actually, this is the, uh, the reverse is pinion gear, I guess. It, uh... It actually goes shoulder facing up. They didn't say that in the Bentley, but they've drawn it with the shoulder facing up. And then the reverse gear itself is this straight cut gear right here. Uh, shoulder faces the other gear, so they kind of face each other. Anyway, to put it on, you just kind of stick that gear in there, and then stick that in there. And you can move the input shaft just a little bit until you feel it go into the hole. sticks right in there and the way it works is uh, it's usually down here which is neutral it's not engaged in anything but when it comes up here it engages with this uh, the first gear second gear operating sleeve and makes it go in reverse now the tricky part it looks tricky uh, one of the linkages this is the first linkage I'm gonna put on uh, this is the reverse gear linkage Got the spring, got the bolt stuck in it already. And if you watched my first video taking this thing apart, you see that it cradles the gear, the reverse gear, the straight cut gear. So you just stick the gear in the cradle and compress the spring while you push down. Oh, and it's got a little detent right here that indexes into the case right here. So it locates exactly where the linkage should be. So you really can't mess this one up. my Torx bits. They all got scattered. T45, again. Long-winded bolt. See what the torque is on that if there is a torque no torque well, I guess it doesn't matter when I took it off uh, it had quite a bit of torque on it for a little bolt so I'm gonna give it a lot of hand motion huh yeah that's got to be at least 20 foot-pounds <laughs> Should be sufficient to hold it on there. Yay. All right. Yeah, this is going to be fun, keeping that kind of in alignment. Um, I'm probably going to use TIG wire. You know, I've got a TIG welder. I do that kind of stuff. I'm going to run the TIG wire down through the, the bolt hole to line this thing up, and then stick the bolt in on this right here, and then that'll locate for this bolt. 
but we'll see how that goes. Uh, next up is the shift linkage. And I did not carb clean this yet, so I'm gonna go do that. It would probably be a good idea to uh, go ahead and torque the apple shaft down since I almost forgot to do that. I don't want to go putting the other side of the case on without doing that first because I want to check to see if it's binding up or anything strange like that. So, put all this stuff down here and then I'm going to put these nuts on. They torque to 18 foot pounds. And then the Bentley says to go 18 and then a quarter turn. We'll see about that. I'm not a big fan of doing quarter turns, you know, un unknown torque values on smaller hardware. Uh, it's something that's uh, not really used in industry. So I don't know why Volkswagen is telling you to do it. And you probably shouldn't listen to me. But uh, my day job, I am a nuclear QC inspector, so I deal with this kind of stuff all the time, forking little things. We have never, ever forked something and then turned it and, and made it an undisclosed torque value. Why didn't they just give us a torque value to begin with? So I'm set at 18 foot-pounds. bring it just wrench tight and then I should be able to run these down by hand the Bentley doesn't tell you to do a cross pattern but you'd be wise to do so and with something like this that uh, the support plate that these are attached to it bends pretty easy because it's stamped steel I, I feel like it's just a good idea to bring them up the torque a little, little bit by little bit, so increments. We're doing steps. That feels good. Feels good. Feels good. Feels good. Now I'm going to torque all the way to 18. Try for that quarter turn. Yeah, that's pretty fucking tight. I'm gonna do a short quarter turn, right? Holy crap. I just feel like they're gonna break. Alright, I think that's torque enough for me. Luckily, they didn't break. Might as well put the speedometer sensor pickup in. It's all plastic, so probably doesn't need any thread sealer. I've got to kind of turn the differential a little bit to get it to go in. I think I'm doing that right. kind of wiggle it around and do a little dance to get it to go in there. Ah, I need a 19 millimeter or whatever size that is wrench because I don't want to scratch up my paint job. I'm going to leave that for later when I get the transmission done. All right, back at this. Let's go ahead and swing this around and can't get that linkage in. Alright, so I've oiled this linkage. And it's just going to go back in exactly the way it came out, I hope. Let's see if I can remember how to do this. 
as you recall on my disassembly video, I played around with this a lot to try to really understand how it works. So these little these fingers go into the operating sleeve grooves. Gosh, this is goofy. And there, this uh, piece of linkage right here on the right kind of hooks underneath the reverse linkage. <laughs> this is ridiculous. I have no idea how this is going to stay together. It doesn't look like it's where it needs to be. There it goes. Okay. This piece of linkage on the right has a little foot sticking off of it that matches up with another foot on the reverse linkage. And then underneath it has a hook. Let's see if I could find it. I just saw it. Okay, it's the same one. The same right side linkage has a little foot on the bottom that it goes with another foot. So it, this linkage on the right actuates the reverse gear. Yeah. Oh, that's goofy. All right. I assume it goes directly in the center of the operating sleeves. So I'm going to kind of eyeball that, make sure it's lined up. And I think at this point I get to put the other case on, the transmission side case. Uh, the, uh, yeah, transmission side. This is the clutch side. Hopefully I didn't leave anything out. See if this thing actually fits on here and if all the holes line up. rusty old piece of TIG wire. Yeah. Okay. Actually, crank this up just a little bit. put this piece of wire, TIG wire, it's like 8 inch TIG wire in here and okay so I can line up that reverse support pretty easy and the linkage actually falls in line pretty good. I can lift it up with the wire and put the pivot pins in. Cool. This isn't so bad. Oh, I can actually go through the shifter tower assembly thing and just kind of pull, or put it through all of them and pull them all up at the same time, and that'll, that kind of helps a little bit. Oh, I can just pick up on it with my finger. <laughs> That's easy enough. I got to go clean these pivot pins off. They're still a little bit funky. Getting to that part of the build where 
parts start disappearing. I've got three pivot pins. There we go. Back in a minute. Pivot pins all cleaned up. Give them some oil. They do have O-rings on them, in case you forgot. You can just pick up on this hook right here and it makes it really easy to get all this stuff lined up. There, all the pivot pins are in. I'm just messing around with it to see what it does. Cool, yeah, I can shift gears with it. That's what it's supposed to do. Now I'll go ahead and do the reverse gear bolts, if I can find them. That's not it. Oh, that's right. I, I remember now they were uh, these round round bolts. They got like they're T45 and they're round-ish. There goes my TIG wire. Hmm. Losing tools. So I'm looking down into, into that hole and got to line that up a little bit. Now it's lined up. There's one. Now the other one should just drop right in. Other one. Dropped right in. Just like that. Reverse is done. Linkage is assembled. I could put the bolts back in the pivot pins and torque down all the case bolts, which you don't really need to see that on video. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory stuff. Uh, next thing I'm going to show you is putting all this crap back together. So the fifth gear, my new fifth gear, and the fifth gear selector, uh, synchro and selector. Uh, yeah. All right, let's put fifth gear together. So what I've already done here is installed my new little fifth gear. It just slides on, Belleville washer goes on top, bolt goes on, holds the whole thing down. And here's my brand new 658 fifth gear with the needle bearing installed. It just drops right on top of that. Put it back in neutral so I can spin it a little bit. You have to kind of spin it to get it to index with the other gear, the fifth gear. Locking the transmission again so I can tighten this stuff later. And then the, the brass synchro goes there. And the operating sleeve. And I already did this once and pushed on it accidentally and all the little, the little locking thing, locking pins fell out. And I had to go chasing them all over the floor. It was ridiculous. Uh, so 
what I think is going to work here is simply to heat this up and then be very careful about where these are and then hammer it down with the rubber mallet. So I'm going to go ahead and heat this thing up. I'm going to put on something other than skin because skin burns when it gets really hot. So it looks like it flushes out with the uh, shaft pretty nicely. Yeah, that's seated in there good. And the little locking pieces didn't go flying everywhere. That's a bonus. Velvet washer again. A bolt. Crank these down just a little bit. Now I'll get the torque wrench out. I don't know what torque setting these are yet. I haven't looked in the book that far ahead. Should probably do that. Okay, the book says to torque those two bolts to 59 foot pounds. Let's see what I got here. I have to use my other torque wrench because that one's the wrong size. tough to do with this transmission on the table here. Yeah, I gotta put it on the floor or somewhere other than here because I can't hold on to it. You get the idea. I'm going to torque them down and then put the uh, reverse or the fifth gear operating selector thing on there. And that's it.